Hey folks, it's Jim, it's Julie, it's episode 259 of Geeking Out. We are back once again after a very tiring weekend in Toronto, for me anyway, at Fan Expo. Uh, sorry, no interviews, I did not have enough time, so maybe that's, next year. But That's understandable, yeah. it happens. Uh, at least I had a very nice panel and yeah. lots of people were asking interesting questions and stuff and got to see some friends, which is always nice. That's all you can really hope for. Exactly. And I almost punched Todd McFarlane in the head. But, ah! Uh, <laughs> security, oh. Darren. Security. But anyway, welcome to the show. Let's get to some comic book reviews, shall we? Yes. And first up this week is Batman Incorporated Special Number One. Ah, they should just rename it Bat Cow Incorporated. That would make it all the better. Yes. What we need is a That would Bat make Cow. it utterly insane. What we need is a Bat Cow series. Mm -hmm. It would be utterly fantastic. Yes. So, in this... Sh should I put an utter counter below us? It would be utterly fabulous. I think so, you're utterly right. In this, uh, in this issue, Batman is checking up on the Incorporated after having disbanded them. Because, you know, he's Batman and he, can he do has that. to do that. Yep. So this gives us a collection of short stories featuring all of the members of Batman Incorporated. Well, not all, sorry. Most of the members of Batman Incorporated. But none of them matter other than Bat Cow. So, in the first, uh, the first short features Batman Japan as he faces a villain that's been stealing human organs. Squire learns to deal with life after losing Knight. Is that what you're get? Red Raven contemplates the nature of bravery as he chases a villain up a skyscraper that's being built. El Gaucho, Night Runner, and Dark Watch try to figure out why all of the inhabitants of Buenos Aires have fallen into a murderous rage. And Bat Cow saves a kidnapped in infant. Because, you know... He's utterly awesome. He's utterly awesome and has utter disdain for criminals. Mm. So, this was a really good issue. I loved it. I got to meet some of the incorporated characters that I don't know so much about. I'd love to see more of El Gaucho. He's so funny. And I, of course, would love to see more Bat Cow. So, if you are interested Who'd in... Who'd have thought that Bat Cow would be the most interesting story in the Batman story? If you're interested in Batman Incorporated and seeing what Grant Morrison has been doing, this is a great place for you to meet the incorporated characters and see what's been going on. However, I will say that there have been there's one or two little spoilers in here, uh, so you'll want to watch that. But I really think that you guys should pick this up. It's a really good read. It gives you a really good idea of what the incorporated guys are up to right now. And it gives me hope for a volume three of Batman Incorporated. So, Batman Incorporated special number one, check it out. Oh, my only other, my only thing with it mm -hmm. is that my understanding from the first time I met Bat Cow is that Bat Cow was a dude cow. Mm -hmm. This issue happens to suggest that perhaps Bat Cow is a lady cow. And we are a live so, show. Hello, customer. <laughs> so yeah. Give me your thoughts on what you think. All right, so next up we have the long-awaited finale for Omaha the Cat Dancer. It is Omaha the Cat Dancer, volume eight. Ugh. All right, so in this one, can Omaha and Chuck finally have their happy ending? Well, political corruption and a tightening police inv investigation threatens to destroy their future and ensnare their loved ones? Um, You'll have to read to find out. Exactly. But this is the long, and I do mean long, weighted conclusion to Omaha the Cat Dancer. It's taken 35 years oh, wow. for this series to come to an end. And as and we've lost a few people along the way who were worked on this series, mm -hmm. uh, such as Kate Worley. Uh, and, but this is a great ending to it all, and I quite enjoyed it. Um, as a longtime fan of the series, I've always wanted to see how it ended. And yeah, there are a few things that are left to your imagination, but overall, it's a really good end to a really great series. Perfect. 
So if you are a fan of really great adult comics, this is the perfect book to read just because it's such great characters and the sex is not just there for sex reasons. It's because they're characters and characters have sex. And that's Fair okay. Enough. So if you really want a good character drama, this is it. Check it out. It's a lot of really good stuff. Alrighty. Next up for me today is Booty Troll number two of four. And Cholly, barmaid actress and playwright extraordinaire, is responsible for the theater part of Dinner Theater at the pub where she works. Body, a troll and Charlie's reluctant co-star, is, well, a troll who likes to think that he's scary and vicious, but he's only scary to himself. In this one, one night during the show, Charlie must kiss Bodie, leaving both people, well, I say people very loosely, mm. both individuals stunned as Bodhi transforms into a handsome young man. How did this happen? And more importantly... And of course, as, as Bodhi is a troll, he's really not happy about that. Of course not. But how did it happen? And can they fix it? This was my first real introduction to reading a Bodhi troll story, and I'm so happy that I've had it. Bodhi's just an, a, a, a fantastic character. I really can't say enough and, and about him. And quite frankly, it's great for all ages. It's a just a yeah. fun book. Everything about it, it's clean, it's fun, the font is easy to read, the pictures, everything is appropriate for all ages, and it's just great. It's one of those wonderful books where parents can read it with their kid and not feel... And both can have a good laugh as well. Exactly. That's where I was going. So... If you're looking for something for yourself or for your young one or your the young one in your life, I would reach for some Bodhi Troll. Alright, next up we have some more all ages fun as we have Itty Bitty Hellboy. Yes, Itty Bitty Hellboy. Not to be confused, of course, with Kiss Kids. Yeah. Or okay. Tiny Titans. Yeah, well, same creative team yes. as Tiny Titans, so that's got that going for it. But anyway, what happens in this one is the evil Rasputin wants to have the biggest cardboard box hideout. But when he finds out Hellboy's box is bigger, he stops at nothing to obtain it. And that's pretty much what you're going to see in this book. It's just silly. It's a lot of fun. Tons um, of fun. And there's, of course, the naked guy in the bushes. But that's you just know, part of the fun. You know, that's so very important. It's very silly when he just kind of pops out of nowhere. Yes, I will give you that. But I had a really good laugh at this. There are so many visual gags and stuff that's just thrown in there for fun that it just works amazingly well. Even in the Hellboy universe. Nice. I mean, Hellboy itself can get very adult at times. Yes. But it does have a lot of elements that kids can relate to. So what they're doing with this is they're throwing all that right at you. And I like that. And the fact that it's pretty much appropriate for all ages just makes it even more worthwhile to read. Yes. And, well, quite frankly, we need a couple of good new all ages stories. I agree. I very much agree. Um, so, yeah, if you're a Hellboy fan, or wanting to introduce your little one to Hellboy, this is the perfect way to do it. And it's a lot of fun, and you'll have a good laugh as well. Alright. Last up for me today is Ender's Game Battle School number one. I have the hardcover here with me today. It's a very nice, pretty hardcover. Also works great as a weapon. Ow. Uh, but I'm only talking today about the number one. So, and this is in preparation for the Ender's Game movie coming out in November. So, in Ender's Game, Andrew Ender Wigan is a six-year-old boy, the younger brother of Peter, an overly aggressive young man, and Valentine, a very mild-mannered young lady. And... He also conveniently, or inconveniently, depending on what side you're on, happens to be humanity's greatest hope in defeating the Formics, 
an alien race that attacked Earth generations before, that they are still prepared and fearing a secondary attack. I can't say enough good things about this. I've read the book very recently, so when I picked up the comic, I was anticipating a small amount of disappointment just because I find that novels that go to comics often you generally miss out on a lot of things. Exactly. Yeah. I didn't feel that way with this. If you've read the book, I really, really recommend picking this up and reading it because all of the vital information is in here. You miss a little bit of dialogue, but all of the key points are right here and they've been drawn beautifully. I love the art style. It really, really does a good job of conveying all of what Ender's Game is and can be. So, if you're excited for the movie, definitely, definitely go pick up a copy of Ender's Game Battle School and Command School because it's just a really great way to tell the story. Though we won't go into politics. Or no, we leave the politics out of it. Exactly. All right, and last up for me this week is Gold Digger Gina versus Penny, which is a one shot. And in this one, when the world's two smartest archaeologists slash adventurers get into a prank off, they start going too far, too fast, and they may hurt the ones they love with their very silly bad pranks. Sad face. Yes. So, all right, if you're a Gold Digger fan, you're probably going to buy this anyway. Uh, it's very much a one-shot in that it really has no consequence on the ongoing series. Okay. So you don't really have to read it to know what's going on. And, and there's no real continuity. Exactly, yeah. Um, they might say, like, check out this or that, but uh, nothing really that goes into continuity too much or anything like that. Okay. Um, it's not a good introduction to Gold Digger um, because it's really just more of a joke book of the two characters playing really horrible, horrible pranks on each other, getting each other stuck in alternate dimensions, etc. Which Awkward. is yeah, yeah. So unless you're a really big gold digger fan, I can't really recommend it. I pretty much went as much as I love Red, I pretty much went mad at the whole thing. It just kinda did not get me as a fan of Gold Digger. But what, uh what it, I loved about this is this header right here, which if you remember back to spring of 2012, which mm. was just spring of last year, they've ripped very nicely on the ABX header ah. that they used. So I really, I enjoyed that. Okay. Um, but other than that, really, unless you're a gigantic gold digger fan, I can't really highly recommend it. So don't really pick it up unless you're a gigantic gold digger fan. All right. So that brings us to the close of another exciting episode. Yeah. Uh, be sure to join us next week as we begin oh. DC Villains Month. Yes. And don't worry next Friday when you don't see the post. Look for it late Friday night, early yep. Saturday. We are moving to a new day and time to film because Julie's going back to school. Yes. So we are going to continue with the show as per usual. It's just that it's being bumped back a day. Yep. So. Don't worry, we are still going to be bringing you great reviews. As best we can. And we will see you next week. Have a good one.